Google Fi. A phone plan by Google. If this nature lover made a phone plan, it would work on his current phone. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Or his new one. Old phone or new. Either works with a little help from Google Fi. People I work for want what you have. We need to protect Henry. People are coming for her. What do I do? So, you have more power than you think.
a child of the 80s, Thundercats was the absolute epitome of awesomeness to me. I just couldn't get enough of it. I had the toys, the bed covers, and I still even have the town that made me the cork in a school swimming trips. But the premise of a group of anthropomorphic cats who escape their exploding planet, crash land on a new world, become friends and protectors of local inhabitants, defending them against a tyrannical Mumra and his horde of evil minions, was just mind-blowing to my six-year-old self. Of course, my unworldly child brain forbode me from realising what my cynical adult life exposed. That the show was really about an idiotic regal man-child who couldn't keep himself out of trouble for five seconds, as he's too stupid or arrogant to listen to the advice of anyone. So his team of other Thundercats have to put down whatever they're doing and put their own lives at risk constantly to rescue him from his own sheer stupidity, all in the name of monarchal hierarchy. Why the Thundercats didn't immediately dismiss royal lineage and become a democracy in a survival situation is beyond me. But hey, it's a kids show. I'm not even going to go into the politics of how the hell they're expected to repopulate an entire species with only three females. Many of you younger viewers out there may be more familiar with the 2011 reboot of the series, which as blasphemous to say as it is, in all honesty, is a vastly superior show. Well, except for the writers insisting on shipping all the main characters for some reason. But Lion has a more believable character this time around, growing up from a privileged child into an actual hero, rather than being an insufferable dipshit like he is in the original. Sadly, the 2011 version of Thundercats only lasted one season after Cartoon Network realised that people actually enjoyed the show, so promptly cancelled it. But when it came to the original Thundercats video games, if you lived in the United States, you were pretty much out of luck. Which is surprising, really, considering LGN had the merchandising rights to fund the cats, yet never produced an NES game. Though, there is a reason why. But I'm going to make you squirm by not telling you until the end of the video. <laughs> British gamers, however, were far more fortunate. As in 1987, Elite Systems, known more at the time for porting arcade games to home computers, suddenly announced they had obtained the rights to produce Thundercats games and would be released in time for that very Christmas. Released on the Amstrad CPC, Spectrum, Commodore 64 and later for the Atari ST and the Amiga, Thundercats, the Lost Eye of Thundera, cast you in the main of the Lord of the Thundercats himself, who was on a quest to rescue the rest of the Thundercats who were inexplicably kidnapped by Mole Men while at the same time also retrieved the Eye of Thundera, that glowy eye thing that's in his sword, after Mumra nicked it, because the developers confused mummies with magpies. An easy mistake. Not that Lionel really gives a crap, as the rescue of his friends is demoted to optional bonus levels, and according to Weapons Indicator on the 16-bit versions, he already has the Eye of Thundera in his possession. So his whole objective seems more a flimsy excuse just to give Mumra a good kicking. The game is spread across 11 levels, 14 of the other 16-bit machine, or an 8-bit machine with 128k memory, all while the game throws an absolute shedload of enemies at your face. But fear not, as Lionel is armed to the whiskers of an entire duo of non-canonical weapons in his arsenal. The 8-bit versions have Lionel wield his sword like he's trying to chop down a tree. But for the 16-bitters, the Lord of the Thundercats attacks with real half-hearted slashes, only swinging it half of the way, as if he's afraid of hurting his enemies. Which is kind of accurate, as he never actually stabbed anyone with his sword in the show. The show consistency goes completely out of the window later on, as Lionel gets a laser gun, which is a far better weapon, as he can at least kill the midgets with it. Speaking of which, Mumra's hiring process of enemies seems rather moronic at best. The ever-living one seems more adamant on using the hardly ever seen in the show mole men and a rather strange obsession with employing midgets, bats and dive-bombing giant eyeballs. Maybe there's some sort of oppressive bad guy union on Third Earth, or Mumra's just a decent equal opportunities guy at heart. However, it does seem bizarre that yet another game based on an 80s cartoon has very few villains from the show actually in it. In the 8-bit ports, Monkeyan does appear in the game as multiple generic enemies, but then he has equal billing as one of these bouncing minor tools which have never actually appeared at all in the series. Elite themselves must have twigged onto their lack of show's characters, as the later 16-bit ports also included Volksman and Jackalman. Slyth is still a complete no-show though. But in all honesty, the only enemy from the show that actually portrays himself as a cast member, rather than a clone disposable enemy, is Mumra himself, 
who occasionally appears as a static sprite with his arms stretched out showing you the inside of his cloak like he's a bleeding merchant from Resident Evil 4 or something. What are you buying? But Mumra's more than happy to let you wail on him with your sword until he promptly sods off in a puff of smoke. In fact, his best form for attack seems to be screwing with a collision detection that kills you instantly. There you have the audacity to turn around and attack his flying asterisks of doom. But the general premise of Thundercats is simple enough. Stages are made up of hacking and slashing away from left to right, or right to left, with the occasional vehicle section, where Lionel has to break his own spine in order to sit in the thing. Sadly this variety isn't as fun as you might think, as that one hit death still comes into play. You move so fast in that thing, you're normally dead before you even realise it. So after 14 levels, are you rewarded with an 